Okay, so now it's your turn. This time I'm asking you to switch to the SBA database. That's what I've shown here. List the details of players whose first name contains a D, an uppercase D, or whose last name contains a lowercase D. Okay, so this is your turn. Take your time, pause the video, take your time, write out your query, preferably test it out. Run, run it on your MySQL system. Make sure that you're getting the results that you expect. And then come back and see if your result, if your query matches what I wrote. Okay, clearly the table that you want to use is the players table. And you want to have two conditions. One is the first name contains a D and this based on the wildcard characters that we had last time, you could look at that. And the last name contains a lowercase d. So once again, with wildcards, you can do this. So I assume that this is what you got. Select star from players, because we want all the details. Where player first name like percent, capital D percent, or player last name like percent d, low, percent, lowercase d percent. Right, that is, we can have any number of characters before the capital D, any number of characters after the capital D, and I mean any number, zero is also any number. So it could even start with a D or end with a capital D. Again, start with a lowercase D or end with a lowercase D, whatever. I, we connect the two conditions using the OR logical operator, because you're saying I want this or this, not AND. If we had said first name contains a D and the last name contains a lowercase D, then I would use AND, but here we said OR. So that's that query. You, I, I'm sure you got that right. Okay, so another query using the college database. List the first name, last name and the height to weight ratio for each student. In other words, we don't want just the height, we don't want just the weight. We want the ratio of height to weight. In other words, we want height divided by weight. I'm showing you this query because uh, it illustrates how in the select statement, you don't necessarily have to have only just column names or aggregate functions, you can have expressions which are computed based on the individual column names. And we are also saying list the rows in descending order of the ratio. You can guess that this is how you would do it. You're saying select first name, last name, comma, and then we're writing the expression height divided by weight. Because we want the height to weight ratio we are just saying height divided by weight. So what this shows is that in your select clause, you can have expressions. There's no problem. And of course, uh, whenever you have these kinds of expressions or aggregate functions or things like that, might be a good idea to name the resulting column in a way that makes sense. In this case, I've said, call this height to weight value that you calculated as HW ratio. Okay, now this is not always required. You could leave it just like that and then in the output it will simply print as height divided by weight. If you don't want that, you can rename the result by using the as uh, clause. I could do that. Okay. From students, but we had said earlier that list the rows in descending order of ratio. I'm saying order by HW ratio descending. Okay, that's because we had already given a name to that column to that result, computed result as HW ratio, I can use that. Ordered by HW ratio descending. If it was ascending, I could have left it as it is. But since it's descending, we have to mention descending. If it was ascending, that's the default. So I could have simply said, order by HW ratio, that's it. Okay, so when you do that, you get this result, but it doesn't look like this result is what we want, right? Because this has got too much precision, much, much more than what we might care for. I mean, it's got something like eight or nine decimal places of accuracy. We may not want that. Typically, when we're calculating these kinds of values, we may want to round it off to two or three decimal places. Okay, so the next query will show you how to, the next page slide will show you how to do that. Okay, this time we want the results actually rounded, let's say to three decimal places and you can get that easily by using the round function, as you can see here. So I'm saying select the first name, last name, and then calculate the height to weight ratio, but then round it off, round height divided by weight comma two. 
and within parentheses. So we are using the round function here. You're calling the round function and as its arguments, you're saying the ratio which you want to round and how many decimal places we want to round to. Actually speaking, this should be three because here you see the result is three. So I should actually correct it right away. Not two, but it should be three because that's what we are seeing here. Okay, so we have rounded to three decimal places, so it should be three. Now your turn, one more query using the basketball database. List the coach ID and the total number of characters in the coach's name. That is number of characters in the first name plus number of characters in the last name. Okay, so we have seen how we can use expressions in the select clause. And you just have to figure out how you're going to find the total number of characters. If you just flip back a little bit, you'll see that we discussed some string functions which might help you to do this. So once again, as usual, pause the video, try to get your answer, try it out on the system. Make sure that the results you're getting make sense. If you get any error message, don't just give up. Carefully read the error message and see what it's trying to tell you. Okay. Many times I find that as beginners, when we get an error, we tend to think, oh, the system is doing something. It's not, it's not working properly and so on. When you're interacting with a computer, it has no choice. It has to simply carry out what you said. So if you see a mistake, 99.9999% of the time, the mistake is something that we made. Okay. So, and it tries to tell you what the mistake you made might have been. So look carefully at the error message. Try to make sense of it and try to correct your query based on what you see in the error message. Okay. Uh, it's a good learning experience. In fact, making mistakes is the only way you learn whenever you're trying to learn something new. So don't be worried about making mistakes. Don't think, oh, don't get frustrated because you make mistakes. There's no way to learn without making mistakes. Even now when I'm preparing all these lectures, I make mistakes. I have to try out my query and then make sure it works and then come and post it. Sometimes I'll just type out a query and it'll be wrong. So I do make mistakes even now. Point is not to not make mistakes, but the point is when you make mistakes to fix them, to look at the error message and fix them. Okay, so I'm assuming again, you pause the video and you've continued it at this point. So you probably got this query. So it's select coach ID, CAD length, coach first name plus CAD length coach last name because the CAD length function string function which we discussed earlier is what gives you the length of a string field so we're saying get me the length of the first name get me the length of the last name add the two things up okay and we are saying okay that's the expression that I'm going to select and because we've got this complicated expression I'm giving it a name as name length from coaches okay I'm pretty sure you got this as well. Uh, so just illustrating to you how there are new things with additional functions that you can do in. One more example for you, one more exercise for you. Again, this uses the basketball database. List each alphabet and the average height and weight of players whose last names start with that alphabet and round the averages to three decimal places. Okay, so think about what the query is asking you first. Each alphabet, so for example, alphabet A, you get all the students or all the players who have, whose last names begin with that alphabet. Among all those players, what is the average height and average weight of those players? Okay, so that's really what we are trying to look at. So visualize the query, again, pause the video, get your answer, try it out on the system, then proceed. This is very similar to what we have done earlier with students. So we are saying select substring player last name comma one comma one that gets the first character of the player's last name. I'm calling it again as letter. And then I'm saying round the average height to three decimal places and round the average weight 
to three decimal places. Earlier we had used count in this uh, in the student example we had used count to find out how many students have last names starting with a particular character. This time instead of using count we are just using the average height and average weight which are also of course aggregate functions and of course we want to select this from players and we want to naturally group by letter right because we want one summary for each letter <coughs> okay so that's really the answer to 52 okay now 53 college database for each section list the course name section name and instructor name okay of course we know that in the sections table we've got the course id we've got the section name and we've got the instructor id okay what we are saying is we want the course name section name is right here and we want the instructor name clearly what this means is that we have to join the table sections to the table courses on the course id and to the table instructors on the instructor id okay so we've got sections we are joining the table courses on the course id and we're joining the table instructors on instructor id okay now just to remind you what we mean when we say we are joining is we are saying we've got the sections here so for this section the course id is 10 so we want to bring the course id with 10 right here for this section also the course id is 10 so we are just bringing in the row for course id 10 so we are just adding the courses information so that the course id matches the course id of the sections table so that's how you're joining these two tables sections and courses on matching course ids similarly we are joining the instructors table to the sections table on matching instructor ids right so you can see here 10 matches 10 again 10 matches 10 20 matches 20 20 matches 20 40 matches 40 and again 10 matches 10 okay so that is what effectively gets us the joining of the sections table with the instructors table okay so this is a three-way join you've got the tables sections courses instructors and we are doing these two different joins for these tables and therefore the result is going to be as shown here select course name section name and instructor name which is instructor first name last name from sections s join courses c okay so here we are doing this particular join join courses c on s dot course id equals c dot course id right again we are using aliases because we are doing the join we don't want the query to become huge so we don't want to keep repeating the table names so we are using short aliases so we are saying let the sections course id field in section match the course id field in courses that's really what we have done here then we have said also join the instructors and we gave that an alias i and saying let the instructor id of sections match the instructor id of the instructor table okay so once we have done the joining we are saying give me just course name section name first name last name so we'll get the course name which is this section name which is this instructor first name last name so those are the four different columns we will now take once we have created this joined result okay so that's really what we are getting here the joined result is picking out from the mega table that you've created from the join you're picking out only the columns you want okay now we could do the same thing using a different approach okay we could change the order of joining if we want okay we could join the tables actually in any order it doesn't matter later on it will start mattering 
But here, what I've just shown is that we can change the ordering. Say instructors, sections, courses, and since the aliases are the same, we could just keep the conditions as before. Okay, so sections as instructors. So we are saying from instructors I sections s join sections s on s dot instructor id equals i dot instructor id and then join courses c on s dot course id equals c dot course id okay so sections course id equals courses course id okay now actually speaking when we write joins like this what is happening is that first it's going to perform this join instructors with sections it's going to get a result to that result it is performing this join the last join okay so these joins are happening sequentially unless as we'll see later on we change that order by using parentheses okay this query says again it's on the college database for each section list the course name section name and instructor name well that looks just the same as before but I've added something here I'm saying for instructors who are not teaching any section include just their names because they're not teaching any section so we cannot give uh, the course name and section name but we can give the instructor's name and then leave the rest of the stuff blank okay. so this is slightly different from the previous query okay that's the point that i'm highlighting here okay so if we look at the previous query the result we get is this Okay, we're getting course name, section name, instructor first name, instructor last name. That's the result we're getting. Now, clearly, from this result, there's one instructor who's missing. There's one instructor who's not teaching any section. I think Fidel something is that instructor who's not teaching any section. So that instructor obviously is left out of this result. What this query is saying is for the, that particular instructor, Fidel Edwards or something like that, for that instructor, we want to include the name of the instructor, but leave these other two things blank. Okay. Now, just try to recall from our last week's lecture, what feature of SQL will allow us to achieve this? Just think back a little bit. If you want, you can pause the video, maybe go back to last week's notes and refer to that. That's all useful. Uh, you know, it's useful to, to put in that effort and uh, solidify your learning. You could do that. Okay. Now, of course, you remember that the feature that allowed us to do that last week was the outer join. You could use a left outer join or the right outer join, but it's the outer join that does it for us. Okay. So clearly, that instructor, Fidel Blondel, not Edwards, Fidel Blondel is not there in the result. Clearly, why? Because we did an inner join. Okay, we did an inner join or uh, in this case, actually, we have done a left join. Okay, for instructors, I left join sections and yet this instructor is not there. If we had done an inner join, like in the last query, then we understand why it's not there. But here you see we have done a left join. Instructors, I left join sections and yet that instructor has not appeared. What is this? Is SQL doing something wrong? Well, not really, because just the last query, I was talking to you about how the order sometimes starts mattering. Now, when you have all inner joins, the order doesn't really matter. But the moment you start having a few outer joins here and there, then the ordering starts to matter significantly. That's what we are illustrating here. Okay, so here we are saying, I'm doing an instructor I left join and yet I'm not seeing the instructor who is not teaching any section. Why did that happen? Okay. Now, of course, to get your solution, you can realize something that I mentioned in the previous slide. First, what it's going to do is it's going to perform this join, join instructors to sections. Then it's to the result, it's going to perform the second join. So let's see what happens in that case. Okay. So first, what it's going to do is instructors I left join sections S. First, let's do that join. Instructors I left join sections S. Okay. Now what that join does is it says all the 
uh, instructor IDs, instructor IDs are matching. That join has been performed. But at the end of that join, it also added this Fidel Blondel who has no sections. Everything is null. Okay. So when it did the first join, this is the result it got. Instructors and sections together. This is the join it got with, of course, nulls for sections. Okay. Then we said join the courses on c.course id equals s.course id. Okay. So the course id here happens to be null. Okay. And therefore, when you join this result, instructors plus sections to courses, there is no match in the course table. And therefore, this row, this last row gets eliminated from the result. Right. Because remember, when you said, when you have three joins, it's going to do this first and then it's going to do this. When it did this, it got the proper result for just that join. It had Fidel Blondel and then it had the nulls for the course ID, section name and instructor ID. That was perfect. But now when we came on and added on the joining of the courses, well, the course ID here happens to be null. There's no match for that in the courses table and therefore this row got completely eliminated. Okay, so that is why the result came out to be what we saw in the last page, right? Because the last uh, course ID was null and therefore there was no match in the course table for that it got eliminated. Okay, so that is why we got the result that we actually got. Okay, so that's really what it is. It's worth taking a very careful look at this and trying to understand why we got no Fidel Blondel in the result, even though we performed the left join. That's very instructive to look at why that happened. Okay, so let's look at the same thing, same query, doing it in a different way. For each section, list the course name, section name, instructor name. But instructors are not teaching, just include their name. So first we join courses and sections on course ID. To the result, we join instructors. We do an outer join of instructors, right? Now the ordering is different. When you join, join courses and sections, this is what you get. Okay, we've joined courses and sections on course ID. So notice that the course ID is matching. So this is what we get. Now to this result, we can do an outer join of the instructors. And because we did an outer join of the instructors, we now see uh, instructors, of course, on instructor ID, the null gets appended to the rest of the table, right? That is because we first join sections and courses. Then we are joining instructors as an outer join. So in this case, the outer join is happening with the result of the first join. Whereas in the earlier case, the outer join took place first and then came the second join, which destroyed the effect of the outer join. This time we are doing it last. Okay. So if you do it this way, then the result is going that uh, SQL is going to be sections join courses right join instructors. That's the outer join. The instructor table is coming on the right. So we are saying right join. Okay. And this happens to give us the correct result, which we are seeking. Okay. So changing the join order is actually rescuing us in this particular case. So this is all very important. You should pay very careful attention to what I'm trying to say here.